everyone. I'm very happy to be here at the Hello Tomorrow Global Summit to present a random ad to you. Um, maybe uh, you have just a little question. As here we are in the booth of a big player of the nuclear, of the energy. Uh, it's a world player. So why is she talking about cancer to us? I think it could be a big question because if you have um, listened to the previous presentation, they were talking about nuclear reactors, about radioisotopes, and so on. So what is the link with, um, with medicine, with the fight against, against cancer? Um, the explanation is rather simple. Areva, before Urano, has been working in the fight against cancer for more than 15 years now. And um, in 2006, Areva really wanted to launch a program in the fight against cancer. And um, nuclear medicine was rapidly identified as a key topic for Areva. So they launched a, a R&D program, and soon they identified the lead 212, which is a very rare but very promising radio is set up uh, in the radio ligon for radio ligon therapy. So what we are developing is rather easy to, to explain. Our drug I'm, are made of three parts. First of all, we have the lead 212 I was talking about. The lead 212 is trapped in this chelating agent, which is in white here. And Thanks to this collecting agent, we can link the lead 212 to a vector. This vector, it can be an antibody, it can be a peptide, it can be almost anything. The only thing we want is that it will specifically target um, a receptor on the cancer cell. So this is the kind of drugs we are developing. And thanks to the know-how of Arano, we are able to produce a large quantity of lead 212 with a high level of purity, which is rather unique in the world of biotax developing radioligand therapy. So if I, got, if I go further in details in how our drugs work, here you have just the drug I was uh, just showing you. The vector part of the drug is really targets the cancer cell here in red and is linked to the receptor, which is here in, the, in yellow on the cancer cell. And after this, you just have through the decay of lead 212 an alpha particle, which is emitted, and will go through the membrane of the cell, through the membrane of the nucleus, and that will hit the DNA. And which, what is really, really important to understand here, and what is the, the very big advantage of alpha particle, is that it's so energetic that it will cause double-strand DNA breaks. And unlike other therapies that will only produce single-strand break, here you have double-strand break, which are almost irreparable in the DNA. In the DNA. And just following this, the cancer cell is just unable to reproduce itself and soon dies. And yeah, something I really wanted to mention here is that with the alpha particle, they are so energetic, so you, so you don't need endocytosis. You don't need the drug to go into the cell, which is really something specific to alpha particle. So why do we have chosen alpha particle? If we are talking about radioligon therapies, it's a rather recent kind of drugs. There are only two drugs of radioligon therapy on the market right now. They, are both, um, they were both launched by Novartis, and they are with beta emitters, not alpha. And on this image, you can see the big difference between beta and alpha. If we talk about beta, just on the left part on, of the slide, the beta emitter will, be, uh, much, will carry much lower energy and it will, be, it will go further in the tissues, which means that when the drug is linked to the cancer cell, even, even if it, the drug is on the cancer cell, the beta particle which is emitted will go not only on the cancer cell but also on healthy tissues surroundings. On the contrary, if you look at the alpha part of um, the visual, you can see that um, 
the, the alpha drug will be much more specific. And the surrounding tissues, healthy tissues, won't be hit by the alpha particle. That's why, just right now, alpha particles are considered are almost the most powerful payloads for targeted therapies. So right now, you may have a question. If alpha particle eyes are so powerful, why don't we have, uh, so far, not uh, targeted alpha therapies in the market? The main, uh, the main reason is a question of supply. It's really uh, difficult to master the production alpha particle of alpha particles and then circulate it in a drug. If um, just a few elements about radioisotopes and um, their use in nuclear medicine. Most of all the radioisotopes that are used in nuclear medicine are produced from, from nuclear research reactors or in synchrotrons, which means that they are very, very expensive, and these uh, facilities are not uh, easy to scale up. In the process we have developed in Aranamed, the LED-212 is only produced from a chemical process. We don't need a synchrotron, we don't need a nuclear uh, re uh, reactor, which means that our process is really easier to scale up. The other thing is the raw material. Most of the radioisotopes used in nuclear medicine are produced uh, uh, from um, radio pharmaceuticals that comes from, let's say, abroad. And if I say abroad, you can understand Russia. A big advantage we have at Aranomed is that we have a big, big, big amount of thorium-232. It comes from our previous mining, mining activities in the 1950s. When I say a lot of, I'm talking about 22,000 drums of, 30, uh, of, of 330 kilos of thorium-32. It means that we have almost an unlimited um, source of raw material to produce lead-212 which I think is a key advantage for a Ranamed. We do not depend on any other supply or any other country. So, um, if you have listened to me, I think you have understood that at a Ranamed, we have two challenges. The first one is to make alpha therapy a success and so to develop a robust pipeline of drugs with lead to 12. And this is what we are currently doing, and I will show it, on, show it to you on, on our pipeline. The second challenge is how do you produce these drugs? Because Arano and Aranomed are almost the only player in the world able to produce lead to 12 and so able to produce these drugs. So not only we have to develop the drugs, but we also have to develop all the facilities worldwide to produce them and to distribute them. So here is our current pipelines. Uh, our this is a public one. Uh, we have several drugs targeting several uh, receptors, and that means several cancers. The two, um, our two key assets are the two, uh, the two first one. They are currently in a clinical trials in the US. Our most advanced is called Alpha Medics. It targets the neuroendocrine tumors. It's currently in phase two clinical trial in the US. We are have almost enrolled all, all the patients of the phase two. We want to launch the phase three at the end of this year. And we are developing it with a partner, which is a biotech called Radiomedics. And the next one, we have just launched the phase one clinical trial at the end of the previous year. It's targeting the gastrin-releasing peptide receptor. This uh, receptor is mainly e uh, expressed in uh, some breast cancers or some prostate cancers. But we have other um, programs that we are developing ever alone, such as GAPR, or in partnerships, and when I mean a partnership, it can be with big players such as Roche here, but also with s small startups and biotech such as Nordic no Nanovector or Crescendo. Uh, well, we are looking for partners, uh, just providing the right uh, vector for our drug. 
So here is a picture I like to share about, um, this is what we observed in our patient in the Alpha Medix trial. Here it's a um, 47 years old man who has, you can see, a neuroendocrine cancer with metastasis, metastasis bone metastasis. He was, uh, it was really painful, he couldn't walk uh, when he entered the, um, in the trial. And our, our drug is rather simple. You just have four, inje four injections uh, and uh, with eight weeks between uh, every injection. And you can see just after only two injections, almost all the bone metastases have disappeared. There are just a few nodules on the liver and the pancreas remaining. Uh, at this stage, the patient was able to walk again, and he did not uh, need uh, paracetamol or any, uh, any drug for the, for the pain. After the two next uh, injections, you can see that there is no more metastasis. Every, every tumor has, dis has disappeared. And we, of course, we have continued to follow this patient and he's still alive, he's well. So yeah, <laughs> this is the kind of result you can achieve with drugs with half hour therapies. And so this was about our third challenge. The other challenge we are developing is how industrial platform. A thing I did not mention is that uh, uh, LED 212 has a very, very short half-life. It's only 11 hours. It means that we cannot just only produce a drug, keep it on a shelf, and wait for the patient to need it. We need to produce the drug in the evening, to ship, it, to ship it at night, and it will be injected to the patient in the morning. Which means that we have to build facilities worldwide. How we want to build it? First of all, we will we plan to build a big facility here in France to produce the, to, yeah, this, here you can have a picture of the drums of the Forium 232 I was talking about a bit earlier. From the, this uh, Torium 232, we, are, we will extract and purify radium um, 228 and Forium 228. Then this Forium 228 will be shipped worldwide to our ATLABS facilities. There, we will produce the lead 212 link it to the chelating agent and the vector, and ship it to the hospitals. And finally, the hospital just gets the drugs and inject it to the patients. So this is really the second challenge we have to succeed. It's just to build all these facilities. We are quite unique. There are no other facilities such as this one in the world. And this is just what we are about to do. The first one here, the Art Lab in the US, it is currently under construction and we should inaugurate it at the end of this year. So maybe just for a conclusion to show you how footprints uh, how footprint worldwide. Of course, we are our headquarters are here in France, but we also have several um, uh, laboratories in France with Roche or our own laboratories in the US, the at lab and the construction I was talking about, and a lot of, of other facilities were about to start to build. Thank you for attention and feel free to ask me any question.